So we have to be prepared as part of the playbook for glioblastoma, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm ready to file an IND with the FDA for the first exosome-related glioblastoma treatment in the world. We're, we're just waiting in the, in the in behind the scenes, but we're ready to go, and that's our next step. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Stuart Smith here with another online business briefing brought to you by smallcapvoice.com, where we shine a spotlight on some of the smartest and freshest plays out there in the market today. Now to that end, and most of my viewers know, I don't often hold a card here to read notes, but when I do, it's because I have an incredibly esteemed guest joining me here shortly. So I wanna read some of the long list of his accomplishments. Our, our guest today is gonna to be Dr. Marvin Hausman. He received his medical degree from NYU. He is an immunologist and a board certified urological surgeon. Now, more than that, he's got a corporate life. We're going to get to that. But before that, he's an award-winning doctor and researcher with 50 years of drug research and development experience with various pharmaceutical companies, including Bristol Myers, Mead Johnson Pharmaceuticals, ER Squibb, and Medco Research. So let's talk about Medco Research in just a little bit. That's where we start his corporate life. He is an accomplished executive with domestic and international experience, and he has co-founded that company. We just mentioned Medco Research, a New York stock exchange company, and currently it's a division of Pfizer. So, you know, we're talking to a man, obviously, with an esteemed medical background, but more than that, a corporate background. So I want to welcome onto the show right now, Dr. Hausman. Dr. Hausman, there's a long list of achievements and awards, humanitarian awards that you've received. I sh I'm sure we could spend the entire interview just talking about that, but welcome to the show. Did I leave anything off that's critical that we need to let the viewers and listeners know first? <laughs> no, I, if I can fulfill a lot of those words, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored to be here. I've had a long background. I've developed, uh, I think, successfully six NDAs for the big companies. And uh, one of the drugs we had in Bedco was Welbutrin, which is the largest selling antidepressant in the world today. And so what I love is bridging medicine and business. And that's, and I'd like to leave a legacy for cancer because my, my work started at NIH. I was initially uh, drafted into the Marine Corps as a surgeon in Vietnam, never got over there because of my work in transplants and technology and research. I was transferred to NIH and Bethesda Naval Hospital. I had a high rank and um, I developed anti-cancer immunological reactions, uh, the, the complement system. How does the body send its immune cells to cancer? What does cancer do? So I've always had been involved in cancer immunology when I went to, when I Graduated from UCLA as a board-certified urological surgeon. I used to make rounds uh, with the pediatric department at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center as an immunologist, looking at, and it was very, it was tragic to watch a child with cancer. I, it's one of the hardest things you want to in, encompass or deal with and the family, but it was, a, it was a enlightening experience. So I've been involved in cancer my whole life. Well, let me... Tell the viewers also one of the big backdrops for why we're speaking today. So pull up the date line, November 17th, 2025. Here's the headline. Exusia Pro initiates strategic realignment, acquires controlling stake in SEC reporting LAMI. That ticker symbol is LMMY in an all stock exchange transaction for Exusia AI to advance growth and enhance shareholder value. So there is a public company side of this today. Kevin, our producer, is going to be putting up some links over my shoulder here to tell you exactly how to get socialized with this company on Twitter, follow their website, all that great stuff. So let's talk about, though, at the outset, I've got some questions here from multiple members of my team who've taken a look at your PowerPoint. Let's explain what an exosome is and how exosomes are changing medicine, because I never heard that term before this, and I'd like to see how your cancer background is playing into this, because you know, this is a massive market that maybe people don't know. They recognize names like Amgen, and we've seen Amgen get small cell, small cell lung cancer approval for its drug, uh, an FDA approval, which has skyrocketed that. I mean, it's a massive market cap, and you're playing on that same playing field. So let's hear how you're navigating this, Dr. Hausman. Well, I knew Amgen a long time ago. In fact, when it, it's a California corporation, and uh, I used to work with some of the people at Amgen. They were in the San Fernando Valley, if I recall at that time. Um, an exosome is probably the future of healthcare. 
An exosome is the smallest extracellular vesicle that moves between cells, brings information, communicates in the body, say between cancer cells and your normal cells and between normal cells to normal cells. An exosome, there are other extracellular vesicles, but this is the smallest. An exosome is a between 50 and 150 nanometers. A nanometer is a billionth of a meter. How do I put that in perspective? If you take one DNA molecule, it's two nanometers in size. Just a DNA strand. Think how small an exosome is. And exosomes carry DNA between cells. Exosomes carry mRNA and other genetic material between cells. Exosomes carry proteins. Exosomes carry amino acids. It's the communication system of the body. It's the future of medicine. And I'm fascinated with it. And I'd like to leave a legacy for healthcare using exosomes in the treatment of a devastating cancer like glioblastoma or just what Amgen just announced with small cell lung cancer. That's an Amgen only increased survival by three to four months when the FDA approved it. So that's our playing field. And I'm going after silent cancers like glioblastoma. These are silent killers. Pancreatic cancer is a silent killer. And ovarian cancer, you know, even a woman is a silent killer. She has to cut. How does it diagnose that she'll have a mass or have pain? But it's been there. And so we need predictive tests that can notify us when you've got to seek medical evaluation. So what has the response, if any, been from the FDA to your orphan drug application? So I, my success is usually based, I'm a chess player. <clears throat> and so, you know, with, theoretically, if you play with an equal partner across the chessboard, if you make a move back, you've theoretically lost the game because he's good. You know, you're both equal. So you try never to make a move back, even in drug development. So I approached glioblastoma with the idea that I'm going to use it as an orphan application. Why? Because a lot of biotech companies fail in their research. Why? Because then the FDA questions the diagnosis of what they're treating. With glioblastoma, it's an absolute diagnosis. There's no variation. The FDA has said that glioblastoma or glioma, they call it malignant glioma. And so glioblastoma is this, it's synonymous that there's no question when you have glioblastoma in the FDA's armamentarian of, of diagnosis and, and approval. And so I immediately applied to the FDA for often drug approval for glioblastoma, which I received. I was communicating with them over the past year. Uh, I have direct contact with people at the FDA. And so we have often drug designation for our product. So you have to define your product. So they came back and they said, what studies have you done? We completed an animal study. I can't really discuss that because it's confidential now with the FDA. And we will be coming out with an article, hopefully in a peer-reviewed journal, cancer journal, before the end of the year, maybe the early part of 2026. But let me say that our results were tremendous, very positive, and the audience should wait and we'll have another interview when I could show you the results. But the FDA has been informed of these results. They've approved it, and we have a dedicated often drug application approval at the FDA for glioblastoma. So now with that in hand, what would the next step be for your company? What does this mean for you? So my next step would be a compassionate use protocol. And I'm now in contact with neurosurgeons in the United States. I'm in contact with families who have know about what we're doing, and they have a diagnosis of glioblastoma. It's devastating. It's a death knell. It's 12 months if you don't have treatment. 12 months is nothing in life. And if I could be successful. So I'm now working with families. You have to, you know, you're going to have diagnosis. You're going to have MRIs, which, you know, which are magnetic resonance imaging to image the glio or tumor. Then your surgeon will remove it. Then they'll probably go on Merck's drug or one of the other drugs. And then they might come to us. So we have to be prepared as part of the playbook for glioblastoma. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm ready to file an IND with the FDA for the first exosome-related 
glioblastoma treatment in the world. We're, we're just waiting in the, in the in behind the scenes, but we're ready to go. And that's our next step. Clear, Once I, I do that, we might be able to apply for approval. If I can extend life, Mer I mean, Amgen only extended life by three to four months. What if I extend it by six months, eight months? That could be game changing in glioblastoma. We're close. It just could be exciting. I'm looking forward to 2026. So we got a question about your mouse study, but is that the study that you're talking about earlier that you can't discuss right now? Yes, because I we would reveal something that's not published yet, and we have to be careful. You know, I, I, I applied under secrecy with the FDA, and that hasn't been published yet. That follow-up interview with you, and I'm going to hold you to that because I'm excited to hear the results from that. Yeah, just I can discuss the mouse study for a moment, but I won't discuss the results. Okay. But you, you can assume they're positive if I got off in drug approval, because they have to be. It's a humanized mouse. So mice kill human cancers. So you have to take the immune system and modify it so it's humanized. I won't go into all the details on that. So they're expensive mice. We did a study at University of Central Florida. The company raised the money for it with Dr. Kimonobu Sugaya who is the professor of neuroscience there, and he developed the technology. And uh, we were very successful. And we actually took human glioblastoma and put it in the brain of the animal that was humanized, and we showed successful outcome. Well, let's move from mice then to mushrooms. And why mushrooms? I, I'm in love with mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms are- I could tell. I don't go into religion or evolution. But mushrooms are very, very old. What fascinates me about mushrooms is you go to bed at night and you get up the next morning, perhaps it rained or there's dew. Suddenly you see this large mushroom in your yard. How did it occur in 12 hours? How did it generate cells that quickly? No bacteria can do that. No virus can duplicate that quickly. Mushrooms are powerful. So I've had another company. I've been involved in mushroom research for the last 20 years. I had a lab, a joint lab with Dr. Robert Bielman at Penn State University. We still are in communication and we uh, do mushroom research. So I'm fascinated. So my idea is you can produce everything in life has stem cells. Strawberries have stem cells, yep. mushrooms have stem cells. Everything has to have a stem cell. Oh, COVID is, has stem cells. How does it generate? How does it protect itself? How does it stop the drugs from working? COVID has another mind of its own. It doesn't want to die. Nothing in life wants to die. So they produce stem cells and stem cells are powerful in mushrooms. That's how that thing appears out of nowhere. We think the largest number of exosomes that we've acquired recently in manufacturing come from certain mushroom species. Okay. And we're okay. controlling that. So we I want to be the largest mushroom producer of exosomes in the world. Maybe I'm being presumptuous, but we're on our way. And I would like to have a menu-driven program using different... You know how people love mushrooms. I mean, Lin Zi, lion's mane, was the emperor's mushroom in China during the Ming Dynasty. You would die if you went near his mushroom. Seriously. He thought he could live to ever, forever with that mushroom. We're using that to produce exosomes now. <clears throat> We're using yellow oyster, king oyster, trumpet oyster, shiitake, maitake to produce exosomes. And I want to label those exosomes and show the potential... So each exosome is going to carry the power of that mushroom into that small 50 to 150 nanogram size and transport it around. You can give it by nasal spray. You can give it under the tongue. We treat glioblastoma through an intranasal application, not an injection in the animal model. We gave it in the nose of the animal model and it went to the brain and killed the tumor. You mentioned a goal for us as a leader in the production of these mushrooms. You know, you've had a very active year 2025. We're not done yet. So let's talk about additional goals. I also think that if you want to do another show, I can send you a slide deck on what I just created for mushrooms and exosomes. I think we could spend a whole day on mushrooms. You're passionate about mushrooms. I'm taking that away. Well, it's an exciting first interview with you and incredibly informative as well. I don't want to wrap it up without asking you any closing thoughts or comments because you've given us a lot to think about, about what the company is going to be seeking to achieve with those goals in 2026. 
Any closing thoughts or comments for the investors? Just to, just to follow our progress. You know, there's, I always use the analogy, the baby just came home from the hospital. Exusia Bio just got formed last week through Lamy. Lamy is going to convert its name to Exusia Bio. I think Exusia Bio is my love, mushrooms and Exusia Bio, glioblastoma studies. Stay tuned, follow our progress, and I think your audience uh, will be pleased. Dr. Hausman took the words right out of my mouth. You know, I always like to say that. Stay tuned. Make sure to add this ticker symbol and follow us here at smallcapvoice.com. We're going to be updating you on the name change. We're going to update you on the ticker symbol change, if any. But we'll keep you involved in all the corporate development side of things while Dr. Hausman and his team takes care of the operations. Dr. Hausman, wonderful to meet you today. I'd like I'll to look- add one thing. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Everything we're talking about can be shown. If anyone in your audience wants backup information, they can contact you, you can contact us. We have peer-reviewed journal articles on everything that I've discussed. And I'd be happy to share them with any member of your audience. So comment below, leave a comment for us and we will get that information out to you directly. Follow us here on YouTube or on our social channels. And again, we're going to give you every way to get in touch with this company, including how to socialize them. For Dr. Marvin Hausman, this is Stuart Smith of smallcapvoice.com saying thanks so much for tuning in.